I feel like what community clothing is attempting to do is, is a radical act. You know, we are trying to suggest a completely new model for the manufacture and distribution of clothing, something that values localism, sustainable materials, ethical labor practices, all of those things that were so central to the way the textile industry was set up before have disappeared completely. And we're saying, it doesn't have to be this way. We, we would like to return to something that is fairer and better for everyone. The idea behind community clothing came from years of working with British factories and working in towns like Blackburn in Lancashire. This was the beating heart of the UK's textile industry. At its peak, it employed 1.5 million people. And today, it employs less than 100,000. I wanted to try and make it the case that people on an average salary could buy good clothes. Almost none of the money that is um, spent on your clothing goes to the people that produce your clothing. So that's the people who sew, the, cut and sew the clothes, the people who weave the textiles, the people who spin the yarns, and the people who produce the fiber in the first place. Those guys all together get less than 25% of the value. That's pretty unfair. And that is why we have a system that is constantly moving between countries and shifting between factories. Our fundamental challenge was to look at the clothing industry and say, can we do this differently? And the answer, of course, was yes, you can do it differently. You can choose as a clothing brand not to be greedy. We don't need seasonal fashion. We don't need to change our clothes every six months. It, it's clearly much better for the planet if we buy our clothes and keep them for a long time. We said, look, we're not going to do that. We're just going to design uh, and develop the best kind of everyday basic items that people wear, and we're going to leave them as they are. Until people stop buying them, we're not going to change them. So we got rid of seasonal collections, we got rid of marketing, and we got rid of retail. We just say, you know, instead of 25% of the cost being the clothing, we say 60% of the cost is the clothing. So we pay really good quality manufacturers who have very well paid staff to make our stuff. We pay local weavers and local spinners. We're not here to you know, change the world of fashion. We're here to create good jobs, which we're quite proud of. I've worked here for nearly three years. I am local, and obviously a lot of fashion is in London, but I knew if I was going to move like back up north, it was likely to be in sort of a fast fashion company, which I didn't really want. So when I found this, it was like sort of hitting the jackpot. I love the atmosphere in a factory. They are great places for people to work. They are very supportive. They pr provide all sorts of structure to the lives of people who might not otherwise have structure. They provide guidance. They provide friendship. They are lovely ecosystems. When they, when they work well, they are wonderful places to work and, and people get a great amount of joy. We've sort of completely lost sight of how good that was for people and also different types of people. And manufacturing businesses are places where those people can find a purpose, can thrive. And, you know, I think we have massively undersold manufacturing as a, as a career for lots and lots of people in this country. So far, we've proven that the model works. The model definitely works. At least one of the factories we work with wouldn't have, wouldn't still be here if it wasn't for, for us. Two other factories we work with have added staff directly because the positive effect that Smith Clothing has had on their overall um, economic position. It just has had the effect of creating some positive feeling around the textile industry here in the UK. We've had loads and loads of really positive press. We want to show that opportunities to create innovation happen everywhere. Who knows how many people will have seen what we're doing and had other ideas spin off from that. The history of the house, the acquisition of, of wealth by Britain's landed gentry is being investigated with more scrutiny than it ever has before. It is interesting that Harewood doesn't hide its past. Harewood looks to the future. 
It's what you do with what you have today that sets you apart. And I think what's, what's very clear is that successive custodians of the house have sought to use what they have for the good of the broader community. It creates jobs, it creates fantastic places for people to go, to learn, to spend time, to enjoy passing time.